guys, the common tendency that we're gonna be talking about here is issues in the transition zone. Um, I see a lot of things, a lot of bad things taking place in this area. Uh, do know that you should trust this area, you should like this area, and no, you really can't camp out in this area, but you can use it uh, as, as foundation to work in your way up. Uh, some of the things that I see is people trying to use spin, uh, trying to have way too much take back going on, not simplifying, not trusting that less is more. Um, and I, maybe they're not recognizing just like the general distance uh, in, the, in the transition zone versus hitting a third. Uh, know that the overall technique uh, in, the, in the transition zone, you should be finishing at the first imaginary ball, not the second imaginary ball, but also too, I think, uh, take into account how much pace is coming at you. Uh, but just know that if you're in the transition zone and you wanna be efficient, being simple, um, uh, keeping things nice and tight, definitely goes a very long ways. Yeah, I think uh, to me, it's, it's probably the, the most misunderstood area as far as pickleball IQ and what you're trying to do there and problems that are in the transition zone can often manifest themselves at the baseline when we're dropping or at the kitchen line. Case in point, a, a common tendency I see in this area is not uh, split stepping or breaking down in time because I think there's a lack of comfortability in knowing what to do. So a lot of players try to make a perfect third shot drop and then rush all the way in to get to the kitchen line just because they don't want to take a, a, a brief pause there. So I think uh, just focusing on keeping the ball in front of you, I try to be like a wall. I'm just trying to have a good contact point soften, absorb any of the power from my uh, opponent, and then just uh, be able to execute a decent shot and work my way all the way up uh, up to the kitchen line. I think one of the, the biggest uh, things that's misunderstood as well is that if you miss a little bit high, you are so much more capable of defending when you're in the transition zone versus being at the kitchen line. So oftentimes going for way too small of a target is a really uh, big common tendency that I see there as well. Yeah, keep in mind you can defend if you have time. And I think something to take into account as well is that uh, with new racket sport athletes coming in the game, uh, we're starting to see players be a lot more offensive either out of the air or off the bounce. So, so with, that, with that saying, uh, we see a lot more players being aggressive with their fourth ball. So that really puts these servers in a position where you really have to get comfortable in that transition zone because if you don't, if you're just trying to bank on hitting a perfect third and coming in, uh, when your opponent's being offensive with their fourth, it's very tough to break down soon enough to actually be balanced. So just keep in mind that with more offense coming in the game, you're gonna really have to focus on trusting the uh, general transition zone. Okay guys, first progression here. Um, I'm acting as the teacher. Coach Kyle is acting as a student. Uh, fun little drill. Coach Kyle is gonna be more so uh, bumping to himself. So he's gonna block and bump and then he's gonna uh, look to hit a fifth shot drop over in the kitchen. The first initial bump is more so just to absorb, get a feel, um, get an idea of where the paddle face is, keep the paddle face nice and open, uh, and then he's gonna hit a fifth shot drop over the net. It's gonna look something like this. Um, he's gonna hit about 10 to 15, and then we're gonna switch rolls, okay? I can feed with my hands or I can feed with my paddle. I'm gonna go hands first, okay, nice and easy. Beautiful, bumping to himself, and as he bumps to himself, he can take it out of the air or he can bounce it, okay? Ready here, same thing. Beautiful, again, same thing. Good, okay. Okay, I'm gonna be feeding with my paddle now, same idea, Kyle's still bumping, trying to absorb. He's keeping the paddle face nice and open. Um, keep in mind too that if you're taking a look at somebody that's successful in the transition zone, usually it looks effortless. Their upper extremities are nice and quiet, they're nice and stationary, they're using their legs as shock absorbers. Uh, if Kyle had a beverage in his non-dominant hand, he's going to keep the beverage there. He's not going to spill it. Uh, and then also, too, uh, he's, he's trusting that if he has good technique, he will find consistency. Uh, Kyle, certain things that you think about just as far as technique in that area? Yeah, absolutely. I try to really make sure that I'm balanced. I want my center of gravity to be very up and down. Uh, we're envisioning that I've played the point out and I've come up and I've split steps, so I wanna make sure my momentum's controlled. I'm not falling forward a little bit. I wanna get very low. I'm really expecting and anticipating that Tyson's gonna be uh, putting the ball near my feet area. So I wanna be down low, ready to protect it, wide enough where I'm low, but still where I'm able to move from side to side. I don't wanna be reaching here if he brings me to the side. I really wanna envision I'm in a very small bubble, and if he's moving me to the side, I've really gotta move my whole bubble to be able to execute a good shot here. I like um, it. Definitely wanna over-exaggerate for this drill, open paddle face. To hit a successful block or reset, we've gotta get some height on the ball. We don't wanna be very linear here, so definitely making sure we're absorbing up to ourselves with an open right paddle here. face. Right here, bump to yourself, beautiful. Good, again. 
Now, if I'm, if I'm comfortable with this drill, and let's say a higher level, um, I don't have to continue to feed. I can actually keep the rally going. Sure. So now I'll kind of keep the rally continuous. going. Same idea. Beautiful. A little bit more pressure on him. Okay. Uh-huh, very good. <laughs> Kyle, uh, anything different when I, when I give you pace here? Yeah, I think I'm just trying to make sure I keep my paddle still. Yeah. Um, definitely uh, using my legs more to absorb. I'm very cognizant of how much pace is coming at me. I think anytime we're playing a reset shot, um, we want to play the ball close to our, or paddle close to our body. Yeah. But the more we're getting lower and lower in our red zone, especially uh, dealing with an aggressive ball, I add just maybe a little bit of lift up with yeah. my legs on, on impact. I'm not reaching out with the paddle, still letting the ball come into me, but providing just a little bit of that lift to make sure I'm playing the shot with some margin for error. I like it. Okay, second progression here. Um, now Coach Kyle is not going to be bumping to himself. He's just going to simply be uh, hitting fifth shot drops over the net. Um, I have some cones out here. We have the shallow zone and we have the neutral zone. Kyle's main role is, is simply just keeping the ball down in an unattackable area. Uh, not only is he working on his fifth shot drop, but I'm going to be working on either taking balls out of the air in yellow and green or taking a, taking a step back and using that offense. Okay, ready here? Um, put a bit more pressure on you. Here we go, ball coming. Get over. Nice. Nice. Oh. Good, good. Look at that height. Okay, great example there. The ball was in his red zone, and he trusted that since he's in a bad spot, he knows he needs height, right? So just know that anytime you're scrambling, anytime you're, you're dealing with a ball in here, there's no need to be greedy or, or to try to flirt with the net. Ready here? Yes, yes, yes. Good. Good. Again, here you go, ball coming. How soft is that ball? I know. <laughs> Franklin. Okay. Give it a bit more umph. Good. Taking a step back, using that step back. Good. I like it. Couple more. Good. Okay, very good. Okay, guys, uh, third progression here, kind of fun. So we have two cones off to the side over here. Those cones represent the whole transition zone. So Kyle's more so, uh, it's going to be slinking inside of that zone. It's going to be coming forward, slinking and back. The first drill of the third progression is going to be lower level. Um, so Kyle now has license to swing and has license to punish me if I were to pop a ball up. Yep. So now he's not going to play soft the whole time. Anytime he feels like he can, or he's dealing with the ball, maybe in that like low green, high yellow zone, he's going to swing away. He's not going to close, but he's going to swing away and just get used to uh, being a bit more offensive and sending a message if the ball's high enough. Yep. I like okay, it. we'll go this one first. Okay, ready here? So slinky, slinky. Yep. Just take. Okay, good. There we go. Again. Good. Okay, slinky back. Okay, the ball's in red. Slinky back. Ball's in. Yep, yep. Up, up, up. Good. I like it. See how he's not closing? Good. Yep, yep. I like it. Get Normally, on. I would Get say. On. You know, normally I would say, Kyle, I mean, are you, are you looking to close if you swing? Yeah, absolutely. I think once you feel that there's one uh, that you can put some stick on and, t and take the offensive route, I think you're better off just saying, all right, I'm going to be trying to move forward on every yeah, yeah. Subsequent, uh, subsequent ball. You're basically initiating a hand speed battle. You want to be putting more pressure and taking time away from your opponent on shots two, three, and four yep. at that point. Yep. Let's go lower level still. A couple okay. more here. Slinky, slinky. I'm still working on being aggressive, either out of the air, off the bounce. Good. Okay, so now we're going to go higher level. Okay. okay, so higher level, same exact drill, but when Kyle uh, sees the ball high enough, he's going to make me pay for it. He's going to swing, but now he's going to close, and we're going to play the play point out. Point out. Okay. Not going to keep track of score, going to have some fun with it. Uh, just know that when you uh, think about swinging, uh, be, uh, be explosive out of that first step and look to close and put some pressure on the person hitting a volley. There's something to be said with, with uh, that person closing, coming at me, and then as I'm trying to hit this volley, he's closing, I start looking at things I don't have control of, uh, makes the ball super small, and then usually I end up making an unforced error or I'll pop the ball up because I'm looking at Kyle as he closes. It's important to train your mind to see it early too because it, from Tyson's perspective, if he was playing a real point, he sees me here, where's he trying to hit the ball? 
at my feet. So if he lifts it up just a little bit, going for my feet, and I can recognize it early, I can move forward and take the ball at its apex, okay? So it's really important to look for this and be ready to see it early. Otherwise, we're gonna be trying to tack balls down in our red zone, which is a no-no. Okay, here we go. Feeding, he's still slinking. He can only really come in and close uh, if he can swing. Okay, here we go, no worries, no worries. Here we go, ball height on that ball. Yeah, height, 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 uh -huh. no worries, that's right. Here we go. Okay, trust it. Trust that height. Trust it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, now we're gonna play the point out. Point is live. Nice. Here we go. Yeah, I think let's start at the at the back at cone. The back. Yeah, yep, that yep, way. Yep. Okay, makes yep. more Start sense. the back cone. Slowly inch your way up. One little step at a time. Yep. Nice. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm going back now. So. <laughs> Good. Uh, Good. Play it. Points live. Uh. Oh, that's a good one. Again, again, again. Here we go. Uh, back cone. Uh, nice. Yeah, good. Prime <laughs> example there, too. Prime <laughs> example. I was obviously in a very right. bad spot, over leaning. This is actually the time where Kyle's looking to close. Anytime he sees me overextended, nine times out of ten, it's very difficult for me to get over this ball. So usually it floats. He sees it right away. Come in, crash, close. Give me a plastic tattoo. All right, guys, drill recap here. Uh, first drill, super fun. Uh, we're gonna call it the bump and block drill. Uh, Coach Kyle was in the transition zone. Uh, I was at the kitchen here. Coach Kyle was a student, I was the teacher. I could be hand feeding or I could be feeding out the paddle. I was more so just kind of mixing the ball up. Kyle's main role was just to be bumping, trying to absorb, and then uh, either block the next one out of the air or block the next one off the bounce and uh, hit it as a fifth shot drop. That was the first progression. Second progression was uh, Kyle was not having a block. He was, he was more so just either taking it out of the air or taking it off the bounce and trying to hit a fifth shot drop. Um, and then third progression, we, uh, we lined up some cones in, in the transition zone there. Um, and so for, for lower levels, Kyle was gonna start at the back cone. He was to uh, slinky up in that transition zone, and then we were giving him license to swing if he saw a ball high enough. Higher level with that third progression, um, Kyle had license to swing, same idea, but when uh, he uh, was looking to be offensive in the transition zone, he had to come in and close and play the point out. So I think uh, the drills are really good, guys, for giving you the reps and just getting you more comfortable in that zone. Everything we did kept uh, the student in that zone, but also I think what the last drill especially is um, not being too passive. Yes, the shot selection will often be an absorbing block, resetting type shot, but we always wanna keep our eyes out uh, on the lookout for any minor mistake from our opponents. If they leave it up at all, we definitely have license to do a full cut at it. And then once we do, just know that since you're initiating that hand speed battle, we wanna move forward on subsequent shots and really try to put the pressure on. With added pressure with, with using variety in the transition zone uh, forces, forces your opponent to start looking at you or forces your opponent to really start second guess their, their fourth and their sixth shot. Okay guys, so a uh, game that we're gonna show you here. Um, we've got Coach, uh, Coach Tyson in the, uh, in the transition zone. Um, we're gonna play a game to 11. The scoring's a little bit different here. Um, for lower levels, I want uh, them to line up in that middle cone. You'll notice we have three cones all in that transition zone. So lower levels line up in the middle cone. Uh, I'm gonna feed a semi-aggressive ball to Tyson somewhere in his red or yellow zone. If he hits a successful drop, in the kitchen and is able to come in and neutralize, he automatically gets that point for neutralizing. And then we'll play the point out from there and it could potentially get two points if he wins the point outright uh, after neutralizing. Higher levels, we're gonna have Tyson start at the back cone. He's gonna have to have pit stops hitting one, two, and three shots in the kitchen. At that point, if he gets in and neutralizes, he will get that bonus point and then we'll play the point out for, for the additional point there. And then Kyle, um, obviously if I pop a ball up, I'm gonna stay back, I'm gonna wait, looking at ball trajectory, 
and yeah, just trying absolutely. to be disciplined so, uh, here. We, we, we want this to be very competitive. So um, if Tyson makes a mistake and pops it up, I'm going to look to put the ball away at his feet. Um, so I, I definitely have a benefit as well. So again, we're 0-0. Zero, zero, each of us are trying to be the first one to get to 11. Yep. So I want to make his job challenging. But again, at higher levels, we really want to challenge you by having the touch and the precision to be able to put three successful balls in the kitchen. So as the player at the kitchen, I'm going to let Tyson know if his ball landed in the kitchen. Um, uh, one, two, three, and let him know when we're live. Got it. Like okay, it. Here we go. So lower level point here. He's going to be lined up with the middle cone. He needs one to land in the kitchen. That way we'll get, uh, and once he gets to neutral, uh, we'll be live. Here we go. A little bit long. There we go. Okay. Exact neutral. We're going to play the point out here. Oh, watch that basket. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the basket. Use right? the basket. Use, use, the basket, use everything you got. Use okay. it, buddy. All right, so Tyson neutralized, <laughs> but he also won the points. The score is gonna be zero, two. Let's play one more out here. Okay, he still did get to the, the, the new, he still did neutralize, so he's gonna get a point there, but I won the other points. The score is now gonna be one to three. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, nice, okay. nice, nice, pretty. So I, I got a point there. He never did neutralize. Two, three. Here we go. Okay, we are at threes. And it's okay to be semi-aggressive on the first feed. We want to picture, this is very similar to a step back fourth shot. So there's going to be a little bit of pace coming at him. We want to aim somewhere, I would say, knees are lower. It could be off the bounce yep. or out of the air. Here we go. Three all. Nice, nice. Four, three. It's the first feed that I've seen off the bounce. I so I'm not going to have you. Aloe variety. Like it. So he's neutralized. Ah, very well done. Okay, so Tyson's neutralized, plus he won the point. He gets two there. I believe the score is four five. Yeah, and so as I, as I hit my drop, I'm trying to keep things nice and still. I'm looking at ball trajectory. Uh, if you're not comfortable looking at ball trajectory, see where your opponent's making contact. If Kyle's making contact in red, I see a big old imaginary sign behind him that says, uh, you are invited, come on in. Yep. Um, and also too, I'm also taking into consideration how offensive my opponent is in yellow zone. If I see that Kyle only has a punch volley in yellow and he's not gonna hurt me, I know that I can probably float up, not float up, but force him to hit a ball in yellow and he's really not gonna hurt me. Yep. There's gonna be other players that are probably a bit more offensive in yellow, so I'm gonna be a bit more selective with my court positioning uh, if I'm playing somebody who is a bit more offensive in that zone. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, so let's show them a couple from the higher level. So Tyson's going to start at the back cone. He needs to hit three successful balls in the kitchen as the coach or as the uh, person at the kitchen line. I'm going to let him know when he's hit all three, and then it's going to be live from there. Like it. Here we go. Here we go. Zeros. Okay, one. yes, that's one, two, a little long, three. Just nice. wide, but he still gets the point for neutralizing. We're at uh, one to one. One to one. Here we go. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Okay, two, one, me. There's one. A little long. Two. And three. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think we're at one to one, or we were at two to one. And he, Tyson got two there, so it's going to be two, three. Yep. Good. There's one. And two. And three. Oh, well done. Well done. Okay. As you guys, as you guys noticed there, I'm actually using, obviously, a lot more height on this, on this first block or on this first half volley. So I'm using more height from here, obviously, as I come in. Then I'm lowering the height, but just know that uh, in this, uh, on, on the very first initial ball, don't be afraid to give yourself a bit more margin. You don't have to be greedy with the net. And then obviously as I'm closing distance and as I get closer to the kitchen line, then I'm starting to lower the uh, ball trajectory there. Yeah, I think the general rule of thumb is the further we are away, bigger target we give ourselves, the more we want to play above the net. Because if we make a mistake, we've got more time to play defense and bail ourselves out. Yeah, and it's back to the idea of you can defend well when you have time. 
I like it. I think we're at two four here. Okay. That's one. That's good. Two. A little long. A little long. And three. Don't you do it. Mm, that's good <laughs> well done. So, uh, that's gonna be two six. Do we wanna do one no, more? That's one, yep. Here yep, we go, yep. two six. There's one. A little long there. Two. And three. Kevin, that's yours. Yeah. <laughs> yours, Kevin. <laughs> good stuff. Right, good stuff. <laughs> okay, guys, to recap the drill, the setup was three cones in that transition zone. For lower levels, uh, you're gonna start by having the player in transition lined up with that middle cone. Um, the, the teacher or the person at the, at the uh, opposite kitchen line is gonna be feeding a semi-aggressive ball. Uh, for lower levels, they just need to successfully play one in the kitchen. If they're able to neutralize, they're instantly going to get a point for that. And then another point if they actually win the point as you play it out. For higher levels, we're going to start at the back cone and you have to sex successfully uh, make one, two, three pit stops with three balls landing in the kitchen before you are then live. If you can neutralize, you get one bonus point and then an additional point if you actually win the point outright. Some of the tactics behind being efficient in the transition zone is um, you know, trusting your scrambling ability, knowing that you can defend well when you have time. You take a look at some of the best defenders in the world and they trust their height and there's no need to rush you know, if they pop the ball up. Uh, keep in mind too that you're playing with the plastic ball and, and when this plastic ball gets really soft, it is extremely slow. So it's even tougher to put the ball away. So for example, if you're playing in hot, humid climates and, and the ball feels like it's moving like molasses, know that you can win a lot of points just by playing good defense. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, just know that in the transition zone, um, you, don't, you don't have to bail out, you don't have to swing away, you can trust the percentages and just know that as far as coming in, look at ball trajectory. If you can't look at ball shape, take a look to see where your opponent's making contact.